Welcome to Canine Code Puppy Class number 7. Today we will take control of belongings or resources. A belonging or a resource is anything that your puppy can hold in its mouth. And I'm going to show you a few exercises today that demonstrate to your puppy that they can only get hold of a belonging when you choose to give it. Now I'll be showing you how to play tug of war safely with your dog and also how to train up a really good give command. For that, I've enlisted the help of a superhero with a cape and all, although he looks a little apprehensive about it. First, I'm going to show you a little let it go hack. It's not really a command, it's more a way that you can make your puppy let go of something that they've got in their mouth. So a revved up Zelda, she's wanting to play tug of war with me. She don't want to let go of the toy. But all I have to do now is take hold of her collar with the other hand. I hold her collar still while I look away and put my other hand on the back. And you'll see how she just let it go. That wasn't a coincidence. Every puppy will do it every time. Watch this. You must look away and you must put your other hand completely away. I'm holding her very still with the hand on the collar. And you can see, here it is again. Oh, I know you lay down. So. <laughs> Next, I'm going to show you how to train up an actual give command. For that, use a low value treat. If it, that's not working, then go up to a high value treat. But for now, I'm choosing to just use a little bit of Zelda's kibble. The problem with high value treats is that often your dog gets too interested in the, in the treats and won't play with the toy anymore. Now that I've got Zelda revved up with the toy and she doesn't want to let go, I freeze my play arm, put a treat right on her nostrils and when she's willingly let go of the toy, then I release a treat. So here she goes, she's all revved up. And I take my little treat and I put it on her nostrils. And when she's willingly let go, I remove the toy and put it on my back. And watch this without a treat in my hand. Now with a completely empty hand, I'll do the motion as if I have a treat. Give. She's let go thinking I had a treat, but only now I produce it. So I'm already getting rid of the bribery. Good. And again with an empty hand, give. Good. And treat. Good. Go on. No, we're not going to have more treat. We're going to play. Yeah. And give. Good girl. And treat. Good. And I can actually use my give command and playing tug of war as the beginning to learn how to play fetch. Give. Good girl. So now instead of just giving her the toy, I'm going to drop it just near me, not throwing it far away yet. 
just drop it right there. She takes it and I'm encouraging her to come and play tug of war with me. If your dog doesn't naturally bring the toy back to you, make the space that you're sitting in even smaller. So choose perhaps the hallway or the laundry. And also you could sit in your dog's bed that often makes them bring the toy back to you because they bring the toy to their bed. So now I'm in Zelda's bed. Perhaps that will make her think of bringing the toy to me instead of just running off with it. Yep, I'll take that and give. Good girl. Good girl. I'll take that. If that's the closest I get to her bringing it back to the bed, that's okay. I'll take it. Uh, maybe we need to have a little more fun. Uh, a little more fun. Yeah. Because uh, we like tug of war. Yes. And anything your dog likes can be used as a way of gaining status and control in your relationship. As long as it happens when you say so. Remember the little formula? We talked about earlier, only give your puppy what they want when they're not asking for it. If you have a puppy that loves playing tug of war, then anything they like, you can use as a way of gaining more status and control. Yes, I'll take that. Play, play, play and give. Good. Never yank the toy out of your dog's mouth because they'll think that they lost the game and that next time they'll just play harder not to lose. So instead, wait until your dog has very much let go of the toy and then of course put it away before you offer them the treat. Now I'm going to show you how to get your puppy to leave a treat until you invite it to take the treat. I'm going to use a little mat of a distinct color so that your puppy can see that there is a boundary between here and there. That's just going to help me get started. Zelda now knows I have a good treat. I put her into a sit or a drop command and I'm going to help her as much as I can with giving the command. If she breaks, breaks the command and walks onto the mat, then I immediately shove her back. Once she stays back, free, I invite her to come and get it. No doubt this little trick will be easier to train if you have practiced your drop or your sit command a lot before now. Stay. Ah, ah. Free! Very good. When you practice this command, the challenge will be to put the treat closer and closer to your dog before you release her. And wait. So now I'm going to put the treat a little closer. Ah, ah. Oh, we need to get off the mat. No, off the mat. Stay. Ah, ah. Free! Make sure that you're not just blocking your puppy with your hand and then going free. Because that's physically blocking. That's not gaining anything by command. Zelda, come. Stay. Ah, ah. Ah, ah. Stay. Ah, ah. 
à 1. Free! Can you see how this little uh, command, although it's just a trick, is very useful in showing your dog that belongings is something they get when you allow it, not something that they can just take on their own. I'm going to take this command a little further. This time I'm going to invite Zelda onto the mat. <laughs> the other way around, darling. That way. Good. Stop. Ah uh ah. -uh. Ah uh ah. -uh. And I'm going to put down the treat on the mat. Ah ah. Ah ah. Ah ah. No, no, ah, Free! good, and we'll do it again, come, come, stay, ah, uh -uh. wait, Free! and my aim here would be to be able to put the treat on her front paw, before I release and let her eat it. Eventually, if I go for long enough, I'd be able to start putting it on her forehead or even on the tip of her nose. It's pretty cute. Zelda. Stay. Stay. Ah, ah. Ah, ah. Free! Good girl. Wait, wait, ah, 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 free, good girl, good girl. The privilege of owning something exclusively should be a human one. If your dog at any point starts going stiff and growling when you go near or touch one of their items, then I don't want you to be nostalgic and hanging on to it, thinking, oh, but it's his favorite teddy bear from when he was a puppy or his favorite chewing bone. I want you to get rid of it in the bin straight away. It is not for your puppy to own something with exclusive rights to touching it. Your puppy can own something, but it shouldn't have exclusive rights over it. A lot of you are probably experiencing that your puppy is stealing items from you, typically shoes, socks, and underwear. They are stealing the things that smell the strongest of you, believing that those are the things that are most important to you. And of course, if they have taken possession of something that's important to you, then they have also suddenly gained control over you, being able to make you chase them through the house and give them attention. So what do you think is the last thing that you should do if your puppy steals your items? It would of course be to chase them. So instead, show them that you're not at all interested in your sock, that instead there's something in the pantry or uh, something on the floor, it could even be your puppy's own bed or something else that has taken your attention and that you are obsessing over to the point where it's no fun running around with the sock in the mouth, but it would be much more fun to go and investigate what it is you're paying attention to. I hope that you've already started touching your puppy while it's eating to get it used to accepting that you are around when it's feeding. The way I'd like you to go about it is to touch them around the hip while they're eating and then gradually stroke them further up around the waist and around the rib cage. And then if at all your puppy is getting stiff uh, or perhaps even growling, then just linger there or even retract a little bit, but don't stop entirely. Just go back to where your puppy was comfortable and linger there until you can progress a little bit again. If your puppy don't seem to mind, then bring your hands up around its neck and eventually over its head and around its muscle all while it's eating. You can even add extra treats 
into the food bowl just to give them a positive association to your hands coming near the bowl. I know uh, it's an old-fashioned advice to take the food right away from your puppy while it's eating, but I don't actually advise you to do that. It takes a lot of hierarchy to have the status where you can take food away from your dog or in particular remove a bone from their mouth. So although it's perhaps something that your granddad could do with his German Shepherd, um, and I'm not saying it's impossible, I want you to be aware that times have changed. You are most likely not at all holding the same stern frame of hierarchy as your grandfather did, and so uh, you can't expect to have the same amount of control. Even if you can do it, and you are perhaps the head of the family, it certainly doesn't mean that a child can do it. From having given bones out to dogs boarding at my house, I've also noticed that one dog walking up and taking a bone out of another dog's mouth is pretty much unheard of. Instead, the other dog might walk up and sort of beg for the bone, and in most cases it would get a clear no, while the dog eating will just turn it back and continue. On rare occasions, the dog who has the bone will simply put down the bone and walk away from it, allowing the cheeky dog to take it over. Imagine the message you are sending to your dog if you are eating at the dining table and they walk up and give you the begging eyes and you simply hand them your food. It's definitely undermining your status and I don't advise you to do it. Most puppies go through a phase where they steal your stuff. Typically your shoes, socks and underwear. They steal the things that smell stronger of you because they think that that's the surest way of getting your attention. They don't really want the sock. They just want you to get off the computer and chasing them through the house. So of course, that's the last thing you should do. Instead of paying your puppy attention for stealing, focus your attention on something completely different. They thought it was going to be the sock that had your attention, but instead it could be your shoelaces or something in the pantry or even your dog's own bed. When they see that you're interested in something else, they'll drop the sock and come running to take part of your game. But don't play with your puppy, because they'll learn to steal one thing just to get you to play with them with another. Instead, just drop the thing that you were paying attention to, put your puppy somewhere else, and remove the sock while they're not watching you. Mm -hmm.